Hey, Derek, how are you doing? What's up? What's going on? How you doing? I'm doing well. Um, I don't know. It's just like you're just one of those people, like no matter how long it's been since I've seen you, we just pick up right where we left off. And I think that's one thing I really like about our ever, um, oh, sorry, evolving friendship is the fact that, um, I don't know, it's just, you're one of those people I just, it's just so refreshing to talk to you all the time. And I just really appreciate you talking to you. So. Oh, I say, look, same sentiments here. So yeah, like catching up and just being able to have, you know, people in your life that you can, you know, just talk to, you can mm -hmm. share ideas with, you can vent to. So it's right. always good to have those people. When you find them, hold on to them that part so what i'm doing now i'm just making sure um you know being professional everything is uh set up here so i want to greet some people hey noah hey jackie thank you for tuning in and if you are just tuning in my name is Kamal Essek, and i'm the host of the speaker podcast and tonight my guest is my brother and friend he's um a jewel wealth of knowledge his name is Derek d ross he's a brand curator all things branding this is your guy. So if you have any questions, he is somebody I would highly recommend. And not just because he's my friend, but he's also like super professional and just a very kind hearted and genuine person. Um, Derek always has something encouraging to say, something uplifting. Um, there's not been a time that I've not spoken to him and he did not leave me into, he always gave me something to think about or we may talk and then go pick up on that thought later and like um, kind of review it and just, um, a wealth of knowledge is the one person. And if you're trying to get snatched, <laughs> I think he was it Sundays at 2.30 or 3.30. Sundays at 2.30 and then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. Yeah, y'all, excuse me, I got this straight here. You know how to weave and show now. But, <laughs> so, hey, Ronnie, thank you for tuning in. So, again, my name is Camille Essek, and I'm the host of the Speaker Podcast. And, and if you're watching, drop in where you're watching from, like you're from Nashville or Charlotte or D.C. or wherever, um, put that in so we can shout out your city, <clears throat> excuse me, and thank you uh, for joining us. So, Derek, just for those that are not familiar with you, just kind of recap for those tuning in, um, you know, what you're about and what you do. Oh, that's a that's a loaded question, you know, and, and I'm I'm actually becoming uh, more comfortable with that being a loaded question, because when you look back over everything you've accomplished, it's like you better shout it from the rooftops. You better yeah, you so, gotta like be that pat on your shoulder, you know, exactly. So um, I am a integrator, marketer and a concept uh, curator. So I've been in uh, the business of marketing and branding for about 16 years now. And so what I do is I work with established and growing entrepreneurs and business owners to help them clarify, create, and then translate their ideas into actionable strategies that help them to you know, increase their visibility, to amplify their voice, but then also drive revenue and results. And so um, I've been doing that across the board from the corporate side with you know, major corporate clients and projects and events, and then even down to the small business owner and entrepreneur and really helping them to, uh, to you know, pull all their knowledge and experience together, you know, learning to position what they've already accomplished to leverage and land more opportunities. So, all right, thank you. We've got some more people tuning in. We got um, Vita Hood, hey girl from Nashville, Tennessee, and hey, 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 I was actually just in Atlanta a few days ago, and we went to the um, Civil and Human Rights Museum, mm. and it was an amazing ex um, exhibit, just putting things into perspective, and even how now, um, how things are so relevant now, even though those situations and those events happened in the 1950s and 60s. And it's almost like, are we there? Are we here? You know, it's like we're 2020 and we're still fighting the same battle and it's tiring. It's just like from one generation to the next generation and we're still really reliving these same things. Even like I was watching the news mm -hmm. and yet another unarmed black man in Dallas, Texas was killed just for trying to break up a fight. And, um, I don't know. It's just like, when is it going to stop? You know, it gets very exhausting. So it's, it's what, really do you, what do you feel like that? Or how do you feel like that being a man of color? Um, and I know with women of color, we deal with the two, but it seems like more so black men are um, first in the, in the line of the attack. So how do you feel as a man of color when you're having to see these narratives? And you know, like, oh my gosh, I need to go up the street or I need to go to the store. And that conversation within yourself, what is that like, Derek? Um, it's, it's a constant thought. It's a constant process. Like, you know, how, what is going, what am I going to encounter today? Because I'm sure all of the, 
the men and the women who've lost their lives, they didn't think that that's how their day was going to end. Like they wouldn't see tomorrow. And so it's a, it's a constant, um, it's something constant that you live with, right? Just like the air that you breathe, it's the thought that when I step out this door, if I want to go for a run, something that I would just do and not even think a second thing about, now I'm just hypersensitive and aware of my surroundings more so, where I go, what I have on. And so, and that's not really, you know, how you want anyone to live their life in a country that's supposed to be free, right? And so I think, you know, we have, we have work to do. Um, and a lot of that is getting the right people into office is showing up and voting and is really standing up and just using our voice and being heard. I think one of the biggest things that this situation and the atmosphere that we're currently in has created, I think is, is broken the, the seal uh, in a sense of now it's comfortable or okay for us to have these conversations blatantly and just say what it is without fear of being retaliated against. Because, you know, I used to say back in the day uh, when I was like the only black, you know, person at the agency that I work with, when something would happen, the thought is like, okay, do I say something? Am I playing yeah. the race card? Let's water it down and filter it. But now you have these intentional, raw conversations that's just raw and uncut, and we can yeah. just it and just rip it off, rip the bandaid off. Like, exactly. let's stop peeling it and picking at it. Let's just rip the dang thing off and let's have yeah. this conversation. And now that it's off, we can just talk. And so I've had very front, out front, blatant conversations with people and non you know unapologetic about it and so i mm -hmm. think that created a, a definitely a, a space where we can have open and honest conversations mm -hmm. and and really dive deep into the issue and find a solution that we can all work towards yeah I, I, you said something about thinking about what you wear and it's sad that it's reduced to dress code and even in that it still may not um mm -hmm. be enough i had a conversation um actually it was on the phone with a co-worker and we're working on something and somehow the conversation about this last Wednesday, the day after, hey, Rez, Ponder, the day after um, the debate, and she's white, Caucasian, whatever, and she made the comment, well, if some black people would not dress like thugs, they wouldn't get shot. And after all that mess from the night before, she still felt like, well, you know, I still believe he's the right candidate. He can turn this thing around still. And he's the right guy. And, and she just kind of went off in this. And I just had to bring it on back and I shut the conversation down. And then um, I explained some things to her. Yeah. <laughs> and um, she kept trying to just shut that down. And then later she sent me an email trying to apologize. I'm so sorry you had a chance to say da -da 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 -da. But I still feel like da -da -da -da. And just went on this two, two paragraph Thing, this feel and all I can say was thanks for reaching out and so at this point because at this mm -hmm. point, up until then I thought she was cool you know but having that conversation um it was kind of jarring because you know you work around people every day and they have these hidden thoughts or these narratives that are dangerous to us as people of color and either you don't want to understand or you're so deep into it, you're just in a sunken place yourself and you can't see it. So then in my mind, I'm going, okay, I got to take you out of this box and I got to put you in this one yes. because now I have to move. You're another cheap piece on the chessboard. Mm -hmm. So now I have to move in another way when I interact with you because now that your narrative or your true narrative in your brain has mm -hmm. been revealed, it's kind of like, hmm. And it's not so much the open racism that bothers me, it's the people you go to school with or you go to work with and you think, oh, Karen, she's cool, whatever, whatever. Not knowing behind all that smiling and kiki in your face, right? they have another psychology working. And to me, that's more dangerous than someone that's out here riding around with a Confederate flag wearing a Trump shirt, you know? Yeah. It's like, and it comes down to the conversation we're going to have about branding tonight, right? Like, mm -hmm. let me know who you are up front. Let yeah. me make a decision about who I decide to connect with, who I decide to be friends with, who I decide to do business with. Yeah. You know what? Let me know out the gate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, what's up, True Cubano? Thank you for tuning in. And okay. they're absolutely right. So, um, again, thank you for coming on. And if you're just tuning in, um, like, share if you have a question pop it in below we'll try to get to those questions comment and post but and even do a watch party but let people know we're out here i have some exciting news guys so i just my whole narrative to change but um i was out when we were in atlanta a few days ago it was a 
Thursday, Friday, whatever. And so, you know how you go through your emails, just scanning or whatever. And um, I saw iHeartRadio and I was like, what? So I opened up the email and they were like, um, after reviewing your podcast or whatever, we've picked up your podcast for iHeartRadio. And I was like, oh my God. So the email was just like, you know, let, um, you know, let your viewers know you'll now be featuring iHeartRadio and I was just like having a moment, you know, not trying to be all get on. I'm like, oh my God, I'm on. <laughs> but I was excited. And I was just kind of like, oh, that's awesome. This is so great. But inside I was like, mm, you know, and it was <laughs> so it was really good. And um, so thank you to iHeartRadio for um, taking on me and the Speaker Podcast brand to add and become a part of the iHeart family. Thank you so much for that. If you're watching, thank you. And um and, and I brought that up to say I had applied before, which is ties into where we're going uh, with our conversation tonight. Um, I have applied, I know at least once before, maybe twice, and they did not take my podcast. And it was, you know, in the earlier seasons, like one, two, three, still young in the game. But, um, and for a second, I won't lie, um, I was kind of like, dang, you know, they didn't take me, but I was like, I'm small, I'm starting out. Mm -hmm. But... I was like, okay, let's step up the content. Let's get some better guests. Let's you know, work on the graphics, even though I'm not a tech person, but let's try to YouTube University, mm -hmm. class of May, <laughs> you know, whatever we gotta do and let's work on it. And then I reapplied uh -huh. and forgot about it. And then they hit me back and was like, yeah, come on. So I say that to say, just because you get that no, don't allow that no to defeat your dream or your vision. Sometimes take that no and allow that no to fuel you, um, motivate you to become better and push harder and challenge yourself because that no now, today, can mm -hmm. be a yes tomorrow. So, um, you know, I say that to anybody. And if you're not, even if you're not an entrepreneur in your school or um, whatever it is you set up to, an author, a blogger, a designer, whatever it is, um, and then and in some situations in relationships, you know, sometimes you get a no and somebody breaks up with you and then years later you realize like, Lord, I think you like that rejection was actually rejection. <laughs> like, do it. So hey Lola. But it's just one of those things where you just have to look at the bigger picture. Like, is this um just to make me or um like what is this no doing for me right now? Because right. it could be a yes for tomorrow. And then in that, as far as with um, mm -hmm. branding, you know, we make mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where I'm bringing you into the conversation for our viewers and our listeners, Derek. Mm -hmm. um, at some point, where do you feel like um, people should, how can I say it? Um, step it up. Mm -hmm. Meaning, you know, if you're so lucrative and, um, you you're at a level yeah but people ask you for um a photo or you're not investing in mm -hmm. photography for yourself or your brand like with um profile pictures oh. or maybe um the graphic work is not the best like maybe you should out if you're not an, uh, if you're a novice maybe outsource maybe through fiverr so in that Derek, what are some do's and don'ts that people make with branding. Cause I've seen people that they're like, oh, I'm this entrepreneur, I do this is that. And then when I go through their social media, um, they're throwing up middle fingers or smoking whatever. And all this illicit behavior, yeah. twerking and eating cereal and showing pictures of the dog. And, and it's confusing. Like you're, you're doing this, but then when I look on your podcast, your kids have your phone and they're playing, you know? So can you kind of unpack some of this as we start this conversation? Um, and get into this conversation, please. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where you can only fake who you are for so long before the real you comes out. It's kind of like, you know, if you're playing a character in a movie or, you know, in a, in a, on a TV show, um, you embody that character, but you only do it for the show. When you go home, you're you. And so I think there's a lot of people who aspire uh, to be something that they're not, and it's not real to the true nature of who they are. And it shows up in your actions because it takes a lot of energy when you think about it. It takes a lot of energy to be someone you're not. And so you, you can only fake it for so long. So I always say, you know, be who you are online, but also be that same person in person. 
So if I'm experiencing you and you're saying you're this and you're your high price and you are expensive mm-hmm. brand, but yet I see you in person and you know, you, your clothes are wrinkled, you got dirt on your shoes, you're, you know, you are cussing people out. That's that, that doesn't resonate with high value, high mm-hmm. quality, high price professionalism. Right. And so for anyone listening, as you are going through, I, I ask my clients this, I always ask them from the beginning, um, what are your values, right? Because you have to get to know who you are first. You, 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 without getting down to the nitty gritty of who you are, you're not going to be able to build a brand that's authentic and that's going to um, stand the test of time and really be something that translates across, you know, um, when you meet people, when you talk, when you speak. So really identifying those core values of who you are, right? And then from there, I ask the question of, okay, well, what do you want people to say when you leave the room? That's the next question, right? So then I have them go through that. And then I say, okay, what do people currently say about you? And so I get them to mash all that together and you will find a, a common thread between the, the three, right? And that will really show that, okay, who you are and how you show up and who, how you want people to see you is actually congruent and connected to what people are already saying about you. So that gives people a thread like, oh, what I'm saying and how I'm showing up is connecting and so that gives them a sense of i am on brand Mm -hmm. but if there's a disconnect there right and this is what i tell people all the time don't be afraid to ask the tough questions you want people to tell the truth like hey do i come off as a as a a butthole am i you know am am i late like i might think i'm on time but am i late yeah Yeah. because a lot of times what we think we're giving off Mm -hmm. is is not a lot of times what people are receiving on the other end Mm -hmm. it's like playing telephone you know you tell one person something they tell the next person and by the time it gets back to you it's it's totally different and so you always have to keep that line of communication open with your audience with your clients to 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 make sure that you are still connected to the core of who you are and what you're saying and what you're doing i love it um java Javius, I hope I'm saying it properly. Javius, oh, Xavius. What's up, Xavius? Is, hey, he said that's a great question. It's almost like people don't consider their personal brands um, to be something that impacts the brand. Um, and welcome, uh, Lucille Benjamin and um, Marvin Manoy. Uh, oh, uh, that's Samantha and Star Jennings. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I, I love that because I think we need to, like, um, Mr. Johnson said, you need to separate the two. And I feel like if you, there's nothing wrong with posting about your family or kids, if that's your lane, but maybe have a page for that, but then have a page for your brand and for that audience or that viewership to drive that audience there because the people that are looking for that, that's where they're going to find you there. And then if they want to get to know more about you and the personal side then they can look at your other page uh-huh. but i think it's very important to have that business page for me personally i know i pretty much just do a blanket thing because my personal life i mean what i have for breakfast who cares you know i might put something in my timeline like oh i had this bomb braised salmon you know but that's somewhere that it goes away uh-huh. but as far as things as far as that i feel like i'm more pertinent and that's gonna go on my page. I know a lot of people who help to tag me a lot of crazy stuff. And over the time, um, hi Skyla, I've had to kind of untag myself from some things because I don't want to be associated with that. And and it's no shade. It's just like, you know, if somebody's like, oh, I'm watching Thor or Black Panther, and they tag like 400 people and your names in that tag list, like why? You know, I just don't feel it. <laughs> Yeah, and a couple of things like you mentioned, I think one is, you know, we we are the gatekeepers of our own brand. So mm-hmm. we have to protect our own name. Like my grandma used to say, if you ain't got nothing else, you got your name. Mm-hmm. So you have to protect your name. So that means who you associate yourself with. Brand association is very real. Why, that's why partnerships work so well when you see, you know, some partners uh, like corporate partners partner with brands because they have shared values and a shared mission. And so that's why those partnerships work well together because, oh, your positive brand association and mine, they connect, they speak the same language. And so partnerships make, make sense here. But, but you also see on the flip side, when you see brands that partner with, you know, a celebrity or something, that celebrity does something that's off 
you know, that's not in alignment with the value of the sponsor, then they, they, they disassociate themselves with them because that does not represent their brand. So brand associations are very powerful, just like your friends. Like I say birds of a feather flock together. That same notion flows right into business. So that's the, that's the one thing about making sure that you are protecting your brand. And so the untagging, perfect. Yeah. Um, the other part you mentioned uh, real quick is, you know, I always say set your intention. Like what is, what is your page really for? Mm -hmm. Is your page for business and connecting? And if, and if that's the case, then be intentional about, okay, this is what I'm going to post on here. This, mm -hmm. this is how I'm going to showcase my life. But then also, hey, if I do want to show, you know, the personal side, how does that personal side connect to the business, right? Is it behind the scenes? Is it how I'm managing, you know, balancing work and family, right? Do I just post like there's personal stuff that I post on my on my business page because it's all one, but I do that in my stories because it's right. only 24 hours. Right. Yeah. So, I'm saying I, the timeline and the little Snapchat. Well, yeah. I all like Snapchat now, but you know what I'm saying? We get old, I don't know, but you know, yeah. the thing that goes away. <laughs> yeah. But I, and I, I totally agree with you on that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's really just setting setting that intention. And um, I know when I really started to shift into um, doing more coaching and, and being the, 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 you know, stepping outside from behind the scenes of my, my agency into the forefront, I went through and did an audit of my brand. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest like anyone out here who has a personal brand, do an audit every quarter, you know, and kind of go through and kind of see, you know, okay, Am I, am I posting? I have a lot of things archived <laughs> from my Instagram and things deleted because it did not fit where I was going. And so pictures of my food, picture, that, that, that has a place and a time and a place, but not what I was moving forward and not how I was primarily going to be using my page. I love it. Hey, Brandon, thank you for joining in. What's up, Hi. B? <laughs> Brandon Rashad. Hey, um, Katie Young. Um, I, 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 I like what you're saying about that. I think um, I know at least a couple of times throughout the year, I do a social media scrub. Mm -hmm. Like stuff that's maybe a year ago, even if your brand evolved, because okay. some of the things that I incorporated now here in Q4 mm -hmm. last year, that's not really in mind with what I'm doing right now. And so I go, oh, I'll delete that, take that out. And I might come back to it later, but right now in the midst of the last, 12 to 16 months it's like what's really relevant to my brand right. you know, and I do social media stuff and then even like tweets even though I feel like my tweets are okay just just go through the, the tweeter uh, the tweeter twitter they right. even have like twitter scrubbers and put in keywords just to make sure you're not being associated with certain posts because right now particularly with uh, social injustices happening right now Sometimes we get emotionally caught up and we'll find ourselves in a conversation, in a chat, saying some things and you'll kind of pull back a little, you know, even though you might be in the moment, but it's like if this tweet or this post, if it were to come up a year from now and you're sitting in that chair on the breakfast club or Charlamagne and hitting those questions, right? Um, uh, there, you know, uh, October 6th, you tweet this, like, right. hey, look out for that tweet. Yeah. For a comment or post me. And there's been times I've seen some stuff and I've like closed the conversation. And I'm like Michael Jackson that pop for me where you're just watching, like I'm here for the comments. And it's like I'll see the conversation and sometimes I wanna jump in. Then I go, uh, you know, and I'll look at the conversation and then I keep scrolling because I'm like, some of that's like a hamster on the wheel. Just mm -hmm. around, around and you don't want to get stuck into that because you get very emotional. Mm -hmm. Um and this and yes, we're in an emotional time. But you also have to let that wisdom and that logic to kick mm -hmm. in. Like, how can this impact my brand mm -hmm. later? You know, what yeah. are your thoughts on that? Well, that's called that's called growth, right? So as you evolve, as you know, as as a you, as you evolve as a person, right? We all are evolving and becoming every day. Every lesson, every experience teaches us and transforms us um, into you know who we are today. And I think. You know, when you see yourself and when you realize what you are, what you want and kind of the big picture, then you pick and choose your battles. You pick and choose where you associate yourself and you pick and choose where you lend your name, right? Because mm -hmm. even if you're in the chat, your name is what's representing you in the chat. Mm -hmm. So is the chat really worth what you're trying to create and what you're trying to build and the bigger impact that you're looking to have? Because really the, those chats and things 
are, are really kind of like high school arguments, high school conversations, like, you know what I'm saying? And so it's like, am I really at, is this a conversation that's really going to add value and shift the minds of people? Or is it just people just having an ego blast up and down the timeline? Uh, you know, you know, that's how I call it. Yeah. And I feel like if you work three, four, five years, four months to get your brands to a level and then one post, that one tweet can undermine and undo everything like that. It's like, it was it worth it? Yeah. I, um, one thing that I, that I do, and this kind of goes into, you know, the whole communication thing, like before I write something, mm -hmm. I, I write it out in my notes because emotions are real. Like I tell people emotions are facts. Like if I'm mad, I am mad. That's a fact that I'm mad right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and so even when you're mad or when you're super happy, you should avoid making decisions. Mm -hmm. and more avoid commenting and doing things when you are experiencing one extreme or the other as far mm -hmm. as your emotions and you want those to kind of die down what i do is i wait till i'm back on a level playing field right yeah. if i'm super happy or super mad like i wait till i'm back and then i can make a logical yeah. and a clear decision on what if i need to say something if i don't need to say something um, if I'm too happy, I don't want to go spend all my money on something because now I'm happy and I'm doing this. I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, shoot, I didn't need to buy all that, but I was happy. Right. Yeah. And so I always tell people like, write it out. It may take a little bit of work, but that's okay. Write out what you want to say, get it off your chest, go for a walk, mm -hmm. go to sleep, take a nap, wait back up, read it again. And then with a clear head and, and with an even mind, you can decide, okay, is this what I need to send, or do I need to reframe it, or is it even worth my time and energy? And if it's not, you got it out, you've expressed it in your notes, and then you can keep it moving. And so that's one of the things that I that saved me a lot over the course of the years because you get mad and you start writing that email and copying your boss, and then I was like, hold on, let me save this and let me take a break mm -hmm. and let me breathe. And so the same thing happens with what you write on social media. You know, it's not your open journal to everybody, it's not your open diary what you write, <laughs> you know, so airing the dirty laundry. Yeah, yeah it's like you, you got to, you know, you got to think long term, you know, you're, if you're, you're, you're in the marathon. It's not a sprint. And so for a lot of us, when you're building something, you know, think about the long term <laughs> and the impact of your actions It's not to be, you know, and it's not to say that you're not being real, you're not being, you know, authentic, you are being you, you but you want to be you from the from the level playing ground and not the emotional you. Right. So, yeah, I love it. Um, and for those who have some more people tuning in, uh, David Warmbeck, what's up, JT? Hey, Kim, yo, hey, Janelle, thank you for tuning in. Um, my name is Camille Essek. I'm the host of the Speaker Podcast tonight. My guest is Derek D. Ross. The phenomenal Derek D. Ross is here. Um, and uh, we are so glad to have him on. We're talking about branding uh, 101, The Rules of Ross, part two is the name of this episode. <laughs> if you uh, missed the first episode, you can go back and catch that on iTunes, Spotify, and now on I have radio. Yeah. We are there. Um, we are choir yard that <laughs> <laughs> the greater Christ of the day set out the greater Christ of the year. Yeah, I see uh, Deacon Horbeck is on here. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Deacon David, thank you. Um, praise the Lord. And <laughs> and we are just discussing branding one-on-one. -on -one. So this is something, Derek, that irks me to death, like the profile pictures. Now yeah. we see a range of profile pictures that some are very good, very professional. And then some, you have people that will go to their grandmother's house and picture on the wall. So they take a picture of the picture and they post that. And you got this reflection of the frame from the glass. So can we talk about profile pictures for a minute and um, what's appropriate, what's not? Background, should it be plain? Should you be on the tree, like hanging out? Like what, what's going on with the profile pictures? Help us, please, sir. Um, I think, again, it all goes back into, you know, what's the intention of your page? If it's your personal page and you're just chilling and you don't, you know, it's just your life, then pretty much your profile picture can be anything because you're not building a brand per se. You're not doing business with people. And so whatever you post on your personal page, you know, that's, that's, that's on you, that's for you. But if you are talking about someone, you know, and you yourself are, uh, a business like you're a solopreneur you're an influencer you're a photographer you are a blogger and you're looking to actual contract and do work with people then you want something that's going to um, connect to what you bring to the table from a pro professional perspective right mm -hmm. you want people to look at you and be like oh i want to do business with that person they look professional they look in inviting they look happy right so if you're someone and you, you have a bubbly personality and you know you love to smile and you have a positive spirit then you want that picture to reflect that right 
You want you want your pictures are a, a window into who you are. Well, it's like a snapshot. It's a, it's a snapshot, right? And so, you know, in a world where things are so visual, you know, images are, you know, like they say, a, a cover of the book, a book, you know, uh, a picture's worth a thousand words. Yeah. It really is, right? And so if I look at a picture and I've made decisions on not even accepting people's friend requests based off of their picture, because I'm like, they don't look real. That looks fake. I don't know who you are. You have a private profile. Like if we're doing business and you're in the world of branding and marketing and you're an influencer, why is your profile private? Unless it's your personal page, right? Yeah. And so um, I say, you know, in this in the time of the smartphone where we have iPhones, you can take a pretty nice picture if you don't have the money to get a photographer, right? You can take a pretty nice picture, put on, go outside, find, you know, either blank canvas or a brick wall. You know, a brick you know, wall. Put some grass on top of it later. No, um, B B G dot remove, um, or even in Canva where it can, you know, they have apps that can remove the background and you can just put yourself on a solid color. Um, people do that sometimes to make their image pop. So you see on mine, one of my brand colors is a yellow, like a goldish yellow. And so you have my picture cropped out and I'm on a, on a yellow backdrop, right? Can you kind of speak to that? I'm sorry, about signature colors. Uh -huh. I know for mine, mine is a kind of community mm -hmm. <laughs> And I selected that color to honor my good number. She probably brand kept it there. So that's the way through my brand that mm -hmm. I uh, honor my good mother. Because right. I'm a signature in the road. And I'll put my store, it's like, why should I look at people to the city? Uh -huh. like, oh, the gold. So yeah. It's like, no, that's to honor my grandmother. And I'll mm -hmm. carry that color um, throughout my brand. So, and I know with yours is yellow. So, one can, um, why did you choose yellow? Because that's my favorite color, by the way. But <laughs> also, how important is it to have a signature color for brand recognition? Like, can you answer that? Well, I mean, you know, it's the psychology of colors, right? So colors, there's a psychology to colors. And they can Google it, right? Yeah, they can Google. Like if you Google, um, if you Google uh, like brand colors or brand or uh, psychology. Actually, the psychology of colors, if they yeah. use that, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of different, you know, you'll find a lot of different pictures or infographics and things like that. But the psychology of colors, um, but every color has a, a mood or it represents something. So yellow for me is optimistic, it's energetic, it's positive. And that's the energy that I bring from the rules of Roth. But then I have this cross between blue and green, which is like the loyal, the confident, but it also brings like the positive, um, you know, organic, natural type of thing. And so, um, so the colors tell a story, but then the black is very royal, very elegant. So I have black in there at times. And so those are my primary colors that I use on everything. And then you'll have your whites that pop in as the base color. But, you know, your colors say things. So when you think about McDonald's, when you think about Ford, when you think about all the corporate brands and when their colors, it's because their colors connect to the value and the mission of the brand as in itself. It says something about it. So even, so when people just randomly pick colors, I'm like, okay, well, have you been back? And what does your color say about you? Because colors do still speak. Yeah. You know? Even yeah. when they don't, they're just there, they still, they still say. Yeah, I think that was a pink. It was a pink. Uh, it's like a very nurturing color. Mm -hmm. Represents feminine power. Yeah. It has different meanings, and then white is like a fresh start, refreshing. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that all I feel like is a part of me. Mm -hmm. So, in addition to honoring my grandmother, it was a good fit. You yeah. know. Yeah. And then too, we were also um, you and I talked offline, but also in addition to. I'm being strategic in four choice, but making a, a logo or graphic that you can transfer easily uh -huh. to different uh, platforms, maybe on a shirt, um, uh -huh. hat, or on social media. Um, because, like with my logo, even though it's in color, if I wanted to flip it to a black and white, it reproduces very well. Uh -huh. And I think also with JT, you brought that up before. Hey, JT, um, about how choosing a logo color selection and we're in a design process, mm -hmm. if someone were to get a copy or if you sent them, like if I sent you my logo, can Derek reproduce my logo and it's not distorted or pixelated and it's still the integrity of the logo is still there? Yeah. So it's like when I think about the, the whole brand design process, because um, this is what I, I, I do a lot with my clients when we're coming up with a new campaign. Uh, mm -hmm. if we first start with, okay, like I said in the beginning, who you are and the goals, right? Establishing, like, you know, um, what do you want people to feel when they see you, when they hear your voice, when they see your brand? And that helps to determine the colors, right? We go into the colors, we go into the goals. 
and all that thing has that alignment. Everything has a purpose and a piece to it. So it's not like, oh, well, I want to create a logo. Let me just, I like these colors. Let me just create it. But it was like, no, you still got to start at the beginning. And so once you get to that, that process and you develop the logo, you develop a logo that uh, really represents you because even the logo in and of itself, even though you have colors, logos, the font, right? The font says something, right? The, uh, the, the shapes and how the logo is, is developed says something, right? Like it's, the masculine is the feminine, yeah. is it, you know, because my stuff is, my brand is very feminine. So I want to give that, you know, very feminine vibe. And that's yeah. right. And like with yours, yours, I think with, because um, I know you personally, so I, when I look at your page, it's always energetic. And it's like, mm -hmm. hey, you know, but that's who Derek is. Yeah. But from the day you met, you've always like, hey, hey. So it's like, that's that feeling, that emotion you evoke when I connect with your page every time. And I think, mm -hmm. Yeah, because logos can have can feel like they have motion to it and movement, right? Mm -hmm. And energy, right? When you see a, lo a logo, you're like, oh, that's hot. Like you when you see stuff. And so when, when you have logos that translate that that feeling that connects to you and your brand, then you know, you've hit it, right? And so for me, of course, I wanted my logo to be elegant. I wanted it to be professional, but I also wanted to have energy because when people see my logo, I want them to be like, oh, they look, that costs money. Because mm -hmm. it does, right? Because yeah. I'm expensive, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's one of those things like, you know, it's not going to be cheap to work with me in a sense. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I want the, that to translate. And so it also goes into the process of attracting people because if people look at, you know, a logo, like when you see Gucci, if you know you ain't got Gucci money, you're not going to go and, and, and try to buy Gucci. Because you know you don't have the money, right? You gonna go to Algae, all right? So, um, but yeah, but when, but one one thing that I do when I create my logo and when I have like my designers create logos for clients, we create them in all files. We create them full color. We create it in gradient. We create it in um, say we wanted to get something, um, uh, you know, uh, embroidered on something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you, you take certain pixels out and you have an embroidered logo. You create a black and your white. You create a transparent logo, right? So, so you can pull me because I didn't even know think about the embroidery. Yeah. yeah. So we'll talk about that later. Yeah, because because you can use logos for so many different things. Yeah. And so, you know, um, printers and, um, you know, where there's. And you have the PNG versus just your regular PDF, which in the early years of me, because I created my own logo. Uh huh. There is a difference because it, yeah. when I made my website, created my website, when mm -hmm. you're doing just the PDF, you've got that background. You have to select the option to do a PNG. Yeah. And now you get that transparency yeah. so it can be transferable to any mm -hmm. background. And it's yeah, it's like the cutout. Yeah. Yeah. So you're yeah, usually it's three, three logo files that I always give my clients uh, is the EPS, which is, you know, like your, your PDF, but your EPS, which is really the high higher quality version, then you have your JPEG and then you have the, your PNG. And so we'll provide those three logos and all three colors, all three mm -hmm. files, everything they would need um, to make sure that once we deliver it, they don't need us for anything else. They have everything that they would ever need. And so, uh, you know, upfront when we have those conversations, like, hey, are you going to be printing this? Do you think you're going to be creating merchandise? And so mm -hmm. we try to think about every use that they have and make sure that the logo files that we send over can accomplish that for, for whatever they need. I love it. We have some more people joining us. What's up? What's uh, up? Kevin Lee Dixie. Okay, so I went to middle school. I know Kevin's this only school, so yeah. Kevin, hey. And then we've got um, Mary Davis and Annabelle Francescani. What's up, Annabelle? Yes, and Latria Morrison from Nashville, Tennessee. Hey, guys. Thank you for tuning in. So Derek, I kind of want to change lanes a moment, but still in the same vein of branding and creating. Uh -huh. When you're not heels here, how does that impact your brand? Um, discovering your purpose, maybe you're figuring some things out, maybe you need some emotional closure, or you're in a space where you still got some raw areas. Can you kind of um, touch on the importance of dealing with you here Right. before you put that out into your brand because personally i do feel that wherever you are in your personal journey it's going to impact your um how you create and the message you put out into um your brands i've looked at i look at brands all the time online and some people may post um, an inspirational post but then it kind of comes off as venting and there have been times i wonder like who are you mad at mm -hmm. because it's kind of cryptic shade yeah. Yeah. I'm not getting that warm fuzz and kind of like, where's this coming from? 
So can you kind of address the importance of healing and addressing that, even if you are in the process of, in the middle of your brand, right. um, maybe you need to step back and maybe get off social media for a couple of days or a week, a month or two, and kind of pull your stuff together. Because just like, you know, I grew up in church, I'm a PK, uh-huh. you grew up in church, and when you're taught in ministry, you're a musician, any type of office that you're in, whatever spirit you're carrying, whether you're singing, teaching, saying whatever you for uh-huh. people, that spirit is then being transferred to the congregation. So how does that then relate to business? Well, if you think about it, you know, um, your business is birthed from you. You are the foundation. So just like our parents give birth to us, we take on certain character traits. We take on what we see. We take on what we absorb. So if you as a business owner, um, you know, if you're going through, uh, you know, a personal situation, a breakup, and you're mad and you're angry, you're going to, that energy is automatically going to transfer in some portion to your clients, to how you respond to emails, to how you show up on social media, to how you look at the world, right? Because if you're looking at it from a, a lens of I'm hurt, you know, everyone hurts me, I'm out to, you know, and, and that's how you feel right now, then everything that everyone says, you're going to take it from a place of, oh, they're trying to hurt me, right? And it may not necessarily be- It's kind a, of like a, is it like an outfit you it's like? like a, it's a subconscious, yeah, it's a subconscious yeah. thing because, you know, we- you know, emotions do impact us. And so, you know, for for me, my advice would be, you know, to take a step back and and deal with that, right? Deal with, you know, what are you feeling? Why are you feeling this way? Why are you, re- you responding like this? I think we don't do enough self-reflection and we don't do enough of sitting and asking ourselves the questions of, okay, if I am mad at this particular person or if this client made me mad, why did they make me mad? Was it them? Mm, was it me? Okay what about me you know what happened what triggered me because a lot of times we can find the triggers mm-hmm. in the questions that we ask ourselves and we can a lot of times find that it wasn't particularly the client but it was what somebody did or what the client said that triggered something else that we're dealing emotional with trigger. yeah emotional triggers you know and so um and so how we feel flows into the words we speak the posts that we repost mm-hmm. <laughs> how we talk and communicate with people the yeah. energy, right? And so even the, the selfies, you take, I've seen people take selfies and they're smiling. And I'm, a, I like eyes. Mm-hmm. You know, I naturally read people's eyes because I think eyes are the window to the soul. That's just my personal thing. And even though they're smiling, I'm like, sis, you're not happy. Mm-hmm. And I can see here. I'm like, something's going on, or this person is like, eh. yeah. but it's not like, hey, it's just. I'm like, Mm-mm. and mm-hmm. it's like if I can read that and I'm not your client or your customer, then who else can read that? And, and then I think, well, why did you post this? Are you posting this because you want us to think you're okay? Or are you doing this to tell yourself you're okay? But it's like in here, uh-huh. it's like something's going on. Like what's going on? And it's the energy you give off, right? Like, you know, people, I don't think people really understand the power of energy that you give off. Right even in the pictures you take, even if I'm on the phone with you, even right now, how I'm sitting and how I'm talking, you can't fake certain feelings, right? If you are not really feeling good, it's gonna come off in some way, shape or form. And so the same thing when it goes to, if you're not good, get good because you can't serve others fully. If you're empty, if you're depleted, if you're hurting, you can't show up. Yeah. And and if our assignment is to is to be you know who we need to be for the people who are assigned to us, we can't do our due diligence. I can't produce my best content. I can't you know give my client the best advice if I'm in a space where I'm not fully there. So I need to take care and do what I need to do. If that's hey, let me push this meeting back till Friday if it's like a Wednesday because I need time just to kind of self reflect. We have to give ourselves permission to do what we need to do. To make sure that we're good so then then in turn we can serve and show up how we're supposed to show up with the people that are depending on us i love it i love it hey emerson my classmate from mtsu representing omega Sci-Fi. thank you for joining me <laughs> um you always there it seems like like i said at the beginning of this episode you always give jewels and nuggets and um some things to think about. Of course, you know I'm gonna bring you back because you're like a veteran now. So I'm definitely bringing you back again. So just wait for the next text. Like, hey, what you doing? Next week? <laughs> right. What's that? Um, I mean, to be young, you have like an old soul, you know, and that's I think 
so appreciated appreciated now because we see a lot of people just shooting from the hip off the cuffs or saying whatever and it's like do you really think about what you're saying because our words have power what we say can land on someone and we don't know how that may impact them for years and it's all because of that moment they heard something that Derek said or something that Cam said and it sticks you know I just want to say thank you for speaking with intention I really appreciate that so much um for those that would like to connect with you on social media to book your services for branding more insight to branding or rebranding relaunching or thinking about that where can people contact you and connect with you on social media so on social media i am derek d ross don't forget the d uh derek d ross on all platforms that's my website that's my twitter my instagram my facebook and my linkedin i made it super easy for you so all you have to do is remember the name and you can find me and uh yeah and, and now you'll see, you know, how to connect with me, uh, my strategy jam session, which you can book a strategy jam session with me and we can go through and dive in and kind of do it. Zumba, yep, got my links up there, Zumba with Derek. So if you, you want to get fit and you want to take Zumba class, uh, that's up there as well. And so, um, yeah, so, you know, just come holler at me, send me a DM, send me a message if you have any questions and I'd be happy to, uh, to help and, and, you know, serve in any way I can. Thank you so much. Um, we've got some news here. Um, Derek, um, if you missed it today, this episode is going to re-air on my Facebook page and on my speaker podcast um, business page as well as YouTube. And also I need to announce with you guys, or to you guys, I should say, on um, this Saturday, I'm hosting my first virtual conference. It airs at 11 a.m. Eastern time at 10 a.m. Central time. And Derek is one of my panelists on uh my my virtual conference as well as some other amazing people such as Jacqueline Davis, JT, um, um, Brandon Harris, and Mark Coley. So um, it's going to end up hosted by me, of course, but it's going to be an amazing event. Um, Derek, as well as the others I just mentioned, awesome people, um, sound people, lots of information nuggets and jewels will be dropped i guarantee you this is a free a free event so you can log in tune in here on facebook live and trust me this is an event guys you will not want to miss it so um i'll be putting out information about that later on this week um you can catch that information it'll be here on my facebook page also on my instagram page at kamika mink um and if you miss any other episodes um this is season six that we're in right now uh, seasons one through five are streaming as well on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, which I was picked up by iHeartRadio a few days ago. Excited about that. Um, Stitcher, Buzzsprout, so streaming services, um, you can check me out there. And then also on my YouTube channel. So if you, and if you do have a question, just hit me up on um, via email, just shoot me an email at thespeakerpodcast at gmail.com. So again, first of all, Derek, I want to say thank you so much for joining me. Um, we're going to connect again this week and get in preparation for us to come on Saturday. So I look forward to hearing what you have to say because we have some amazing um, things we want to discuss. So I hope everyone got something from this episode. And this is your host, Camille Epsic. And until next time, be blessed. You guys sanitize. I don't care what they're doing out here. Put your mask on. Yeah, I don't want to get sick. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't care what people, air quote, are saying on the news. Wear your mask, you sanitize, and you do the social distancing. If they say six feet, give them eight. This mm-hmm. thing is no joke. We need to um, be conscious and courteous of those around us, our neighbors, our loved ones. A lot of people, we've lost a lot of lives. We're losing more. So be, please be um, courteous and exercise those etiquette, okay? Now I'm off the soapbox now. <laughs> and when you get home, wash the mask. And wash your hands. Wash your hands. Man, yeah. wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, y'all. Y'all have a good evening. Yeah. See you guys Saturday. You better tune in. Love everybody. Good night. <laughs>